Liam Ugren scores his first career NHL goal as part of a multi-point game, something that Marcus Johansson has done four times this season. And the Minnesota Wild ride the youth movement to a win over the San Jose Sharks here tonight by a score of 6-2. to two. It's late. A lot to talk about here for tonight's game. So let's fire up another Locked on Wild postcast. You are Locked on Wild postcast. Part of Locked On Minnesota on the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Minnesota Wilds pick up a 6-2 win over the San Jose Sharks. Boy, are the Sharks bad. Um, And it was a uh, fun slice of youth that led the win for the Minnesota Wild. Thanks for tuning in to a very late Locked On Wild postcast here uh, tonight as uh, we have a lot to get to here in uh, this one. Liam Ugren scores his first career NHL goal. Jesper Volstead gives up two goals, gets the win. Murat Huznadinov picks up a point as part of a uh, solid effort for him. The youth was on full display here uh, against the San Jose Sharks. Kaprizov scores a couple of goals. Matt Boldy picks up a goal and uh, has a multi-point game. San Jose is uh, they're real bad. Real bad. Um, they have been all season. So let's dive into this one a little bit. As obviously the Wilds get out to the early lead, but the Sharks rally to tie it at 1-0. And then at uh, they cut it to three to two as the Wilds get a goal from Maboldi to start it. Yan Ruda scores to make it one one. Then Chisholm and Ugrin score to make it three to one. And uh, then Mario Ferraro scores to make it three to two. Then Kaprizov scores twice. And Marcus Johansson scores a goal assisted by Alex Goligoski and John Merrill. And that one put me in a bit of a pretzel because uh, it, if you've listened to this show at all, um, that has been quite the combo that has been discussed throughout the uh, course of the season. So for all of them to all of them to combine, all of them to combine their powers into a goal uh that one put me in a very uh very big bind but let's talk about it liam ugrin tonight i thought looked really good and i know he didn't postcast last night because honestly i was too pissed off to uh to postcast after that game last night an embarrassment against the vegas golden knights i thought ugrin and who's nadinov were probably two of the best players on the ice last night and they carried that into tonight's game and it was great seeing Ugrin score um took advantage of open ice in front of uh, Mackenzie Blackwood as he um was sprawled out to try to make a save that was open nice um nice backhander to get his first career NHL goal uh but then he also assisted on the Declan Chisholm goal and the broadcast was talking about this right at the point that it happened saying how Ugrin wants to be somebody that can win battles along the boards and can be a power forward type. And right as they're talking about it, he wins a battle on, uh, he wins a battle along the boards, able to kick the puck out to the top and Declan Chisholm and John Merrill play a little catch. And then Chisholm just lets one fly from the top of the zone. It's that quick decision-making stuff that I really like about uh, – we've seen this from Declan Chisholm all season. The quick decision-making, and it looks like Liam Ugrin is able to um, add to that with uh, with some of the things that he did here tonight. And so great, great two games for Ugrin so far – his uh, first multi-point game of his NHL career, his first goal of his NHL career, Marcus Johansson by extension in 76 games. 
has four multi-point games. Um, and so that was great to see. Kaprizov continues to be just an absolute monster. Uh, 44 goals on the season, and he had an assist as well. He's got 49 assists. So he is Kaprizov with two games left, especially if the Los Angeles Kings um, decide to rest some people. Selfishly, we have an outside chance at a 100-point season here selfishly um, would be something great to get in these final two games. Kaprizov just continues to be a monster. Matt Boldy's got a career high in points. He's two goals away from 30. It was the young players that, uh, that led things in this game here today, but it also underscores what has been a problem for this team all season. We got the graphic during the game that the Minnesota wilds have the 29th, most goals by players who record 14 or fewer minutes in a game. It's that secondary scoring again. And you look up and down the score sheet and a lot of the veteran guys scoreless in this one tonight, your fourth line scoreless tonight. Again, it is, uh, it, it is something that is not going to be a problem playing the San Jose Sharks because, again, I cannot underscore enough. They are real bad. Uh, for instance, some of the underlying statistics, Mackenzie Blackwood tonight in net. This is courtesy of moneypuck.com. He had an expected goals against of uh, 3.41 tonight. He gave up six. So he... Had 2.58 goals saved below expected. That's just real not great. Jesper, by extension, he had a expected goals against of 1.48. Give up two goals. But I thought he really did a good job of kind of settling in as the game went along. And look, we can, we ideally want to see Jesper get opportunities against teams of higher caliber, but I have no problem with him getting an opportunity to get his feet wet against the bottom feeders, against the Chicago's, against the San Jose's, where you're going to face a lesser volume of shots, which allow him to just kind of let the game play out um, without having to just um, routinely face just these flurries of shots. So I thought Jesper was good here tonight. Um it, this is not a hot take, but this is something that is going to be non-negotiable for me um, for next year. I think Murat, who's Nadinov, needs to be one of the main four penalty killers for next year's team. I know you're facing the Sharks, but the fact that who's Nadinov had a few shorthanded opportunities in this game, he he is going to be a weapon for that penalty kill in the same vein that Connor Dewar and Brandon Duhame were. Oh, and he also can uh, can play pretty well, too. So, fun to see, and I continue to like seeing who's Nadinov and Ugrin get paired together. But let's also talk about this, because I was upset before the game that Adam Beckman didn't play. And then tonight, you go with the 11-7 lineup, but Kirill Kaprizov getting a shift with uh, getting a couple of shifts, I think, with Marat and Liam Ugrin. Matt Boldy got a shift with those two guys. I I'm okay with that. Getting an opportunity to just see how those guys fit together. I'm fine with giving Kaprizov opportunities that wouldn't normally exist to play with those guys to just help generate more opportunities for them to do their thing. So was initially not super thrilled about that decision, but honestly, if it leads to Boldy and Kaprizov playing with those guys, that's fine by me. All in all, with two games left in the season, it, uh, it gets you to 38, 32, and 10, and uh, the fact that the Eastern Conference teams that you are battling with uh, in the draft lottery 
Minnesota Wild are currently 12th. Currently 12th in the um in the draft standings. And um so those teams can continue to to jockey for points. Probably not going to beat the Kings and then you maybe beat the uh the Kraken at the end of the season although um who's to say there. So a lot a lot to like from the youth in uh, this game here tonight. But beyond that, I mean is another one shot game for Marcus Johansson. He had three miss the net. He had three miss the net, including one that was directly in front of the net. He was between the face off circles, just had wide open space, and he sends it over the net. And I got to tell you, people, when when he did that, when that shot went over the net as opposed to even it, it doesn't even count as a shot on goal it's a shot attempt but not a shot on goal because he missed the net it it just about threw me off the edge there has to be a there has to be something in that spot and i listened to i went to the city's day a day trip to the cities today so i was in the car listening to beyond the pond for one and it was brought up you know what do you do in that spot if marcus johansson doesn't play there and i'm just screaming in the car put anybody else there like of the things of the things that are most frustrating as to how this season played out i think the fact that you put a guy who now has 43 out of 76 games, 43 out of 76 with one shot or fewer. I think the fact that we continue to see that on the second line is probably up at the top of the list. But hopefully that will be addressed in the offseason. I, I guess we'll wait and see. But all in all, very excited, very fun game. Um, to see a lot of the uh, achievements, for instance, for Liam Uger, and that was top of the list. Declan Chisholm with a sweet goal. Um, fun to see those guys get an opportunity here. Fun to see Jesper get another win. Fun to see those guys take advantage of their opportunities here tonight. Um, and, you know, we've we've got two more opportunities to see some of these guys before the off season hits. That's that's my two cents, 10 cents for tonight's game. If it's two cents, it's still one more than Marcus Johansson shot attempts. He did score tonight. I mean, again, Johansson from Goligoski and Merrill. And I just, I just laughed to myself because like, if if we could have gotten that, I don't know, 15 more times, 20. Anyway, um, that is kind of my two cents. Let's get yours as we continue a very late Locked on Wild postcast. Minnesota Wild pick up a 6-2 to two win over the San Jose Sharks. We will take your questions after we, uh, after we come back here on tonight's Locked on Wild postcast. Tonight's Locked on Wild postcast is brought to you by Factor Meals. Eat stress-free this spring with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also discover more than 60 add-ons every week like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and fuel your springtime goals. Get chef-prepared meals on the table in two minutes with Factors ready-to-eat meals so you can get back to doing what you love this spring. Head to factormeals.com slash lockdownnhl50 
and use code locked on NHL 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code locked on NHL 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your prescription is still active. Tonight's Locked on Wild postcast also brought to you by Indeed. When you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could handpick the best stars for your business team? If you're building your talent roster, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching, assessments, and virtual interviews. Join over 3 million businesses worldwide using Indeed to hire great talent fast. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. That's Indeed.com slash locked on. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Welcome back to tonight's Locked on Wild postcast. I guess I should say this morning's Locked on Wild postcast as the Wilds pick up a win 6-2 to two over the San Jose Sharks, a game that started at 9.40. We didn't. We were heading to the third period, and it was eleven thirty p.m. <sighs> one more, one more West Coast game for the season, and it cannot get here fast enough. Let's get to the comments. Quadrum gets us started. It's a mix of feelings as Kaprizov scores more goals. He's heating up just at the right moment with only two games and no playoffs left. The key thing here, Quadrum, is knock on wood. Oh, God, I shouldn't even say it. You know where I'm going with this. The key thing for Kirill is that he will be able to avoid what happened last season. Again, knock on wood. I If I jinx it, I'm going to... So he'll be able to go through the full offseason and should then theoretically be ready to rock full bore come next season. And we're going to look at the pace of the Kaprizov, Boldy, Eric's neckline because they played nine... They played something like nine minutes, 28 seconds together here tonight. 921, they were responsible for 20 shot attempts in nine minutes together as a line. They throttled, yes, it's the Sharks, but they throttled the Sharks in the shot attempts department. They scored two goals as well. Kaprizov scored them. Well, actually, no, because Kaprizov had one on the power play. So Boldy and Kaprizov both get one. Um that's going to be your top line next year. And that line has an opportunity, if those guys all stay healthy, to do some real scary things for the rest of the division. So it's not going to surprise me. I mean, K- Kirill is at, what is he at after tonight's game? So he's got 49 assists. He's got 93 points. If he stays healthy next year and he is even remotely close to where he's at right now, it's going to be another 100-point season for Kaprizov. So I think he is in a much better spot, obviously, than he was at the beginning of the season. And so now the hope is that he just, through these final two games, is able to avoid what happened last year. Ugrin's first goal and first assist of his career. This is why you let the kids play. Got to let them develop so that they can be ready for next year. And especially like the, the, I think the best case study in why the young players should play is what happened with Jesper. He played against the Dallas stars. It did not go well, but what did he do? He took it to heart. 
he worked on some things down in Iowa and he came back and I know it's against lesser opponents, but he still looked good in both games. And so that's why we talk so much about using this opportunity to give these guys the opportunity to just see where they're at. What do you think Murat Huznadinov and Liam Ugrin are going to do this offseason? They're going to use these games that they played as a measuring stick for where they're at and the areas that they need to improve over the offseason, whether it be adding some poundage or working on shots or whatever it may be. You use a little taste of NHL play to um, just kind of measure where you're at. It's a measuring stick. If you don't give that opportunity because you continue to um, you continue to just put guys in the same spots, that's where it gets frustrating. And so like you just need to like these are valuable opportunities even with the team not in playoff contention. These are valuable opportunities for these guys to be able to work on some things because I know it's two games, but you mean to tell me that Liam Ugrin couldn't play a role on this team next year? You mean to tell me Murat, who's Nadinov, doesn't have a role cemented for next year? Like, And those are all possible because they get the opportunity to see where they're at and what need they need to work on um, here. This is why we went to the greater good as early as we did. So we had the opportunities for the Ugrins, for the Huznadinovs, for the Yespers. So they get the opportunity to see where they're at and um, to, you know, to build off of it. Make sure everybody plays more than 14 minutes and your, <laughs> your secondary scoring problem is solved. I like that. Can we please sit Marcus Johansson for the uh, next two games? He literally throws the puck away during extended zone time. He he there was one play in last night's game in which he basically just got like pushed out of the way, like bumped slightly. Maybe, maybe it was even just a and had control of the puck, lost it, and I believe Vegas scored almost immediately after he lost the puck. And you know, this is part of the this is part of the reason this this is kind of going hand in hand with all the talk about the fact that this team needs to get more bigger or more physical. That's a perfect example is Johansson just does not bring any of that to the table. And if you get somebody in that spot, yes, you would ideally like to have a, a wide arcing amount of uh, speed and skill. If those guys can be physical enough to win puck battles, like if, if you just get moved off the puck every time you have it, you don't bring a ton. And if you're racking up one shot or fewer, like you're going through the express lane, like if you're just racking up those types of games, that's not going to, that's not going to cut it. So I'm all in favor of just being done with the experiments entirely. Like I'm all in favor of moving on after the season is done. Um, like you, you just could do so much better in that roster spot. And well, thank God you're not the GM. I'm not the only one that feels that way. Um, there are many people Russo was saying it. Um, Russo was saying it on the latest, uh, we're seats in the house. Like it's time for the experiment to end. It hasn't worked. It didn't work 20 games in. It hasn't worked since it's time to move on. And it's time to just try to find something else that works in that spot. It's a valuable spot. It's a key spot for a team. 
And if you're going to if you're going to do any better next year than you did this year, you have to have a second line that can keep up and can give you somebody else that can score if your top line gets shut down. They they just they have to do better in that spot. And Marcus Johansson just has never been the guy there. He was the guy for 20 games last year and has never been the guy since. Shark Boy Ben, I think, unfortunately, is correct. It just feels like the team, and uh, he, uh, it's now, I think, 23 games that Beckman has played. Yes, he hasn't scored. I still will, I still will make the point that I don't think he has been given a good enough opportunity to showcase his skills. But it feels like at this point, the team has seen all they need to see, which is disappointing because you've asked Beckman was asked to work on his defense more. I think it was last year. And so he went down to Iowa, he played like the he played third line for a good majority of the season, to try to be more physical. It just doesn't feel like he was given the proper opportunity to see what he had but the the team evidently feels like they have seen all they need to see which is why i think shark boy ben is right i think he's gone i think he'll be gone at the end of the season and um you know that's that's just that's unfortunately how it goes sometimes i would be highly in favor of seeing him get an opportunity over these next two games but We've been clamoring for that for a long time, and it just it just has not been there. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of where that's kind of where we're at for uh, for Beckman. Unfortunately, good question for Anita. Who is in goal for the final two games? Here's what will probably happen: is it'll probably be Gustafson against the Kings get him one final start and I don't think there is any other scenario other than flurry getting that final start at home against the Kraken I don't think there's any other scenario in play because if this is indeed it you want to give the fans an opportunity to show their appreciation for what he has done not only as a member of the Minnesota Wilds but throughout the uh, the course of his career, as well. So that is a hundred percent how that's going to play out. Um, it will be interesting to see with Gustafson what, um, what he does against the Kings. Jesper, I think Jesper looked, Jesper's looked good against the, uh, the Blackhawks and the, um, The Sharks. I was like, what team? Oh, yeah, it's the Sharks. So um, I think he did. I think he did good in those two games. And I think you give the rest of the goalies one more. um, And that'll be that. Trade Jojo and Goudreau to Salt Lake. Maybe the... uh, well, it is all of the um, it is all of the Arizona employees. So maybe you could um, maybe you could get them to take on the uh, those two. I don't know. I'm I'm well past time being done watching those guys. Um, so. Very much ready to see them move on to the uh, the next spot. And honestly, like Jake Lucini, Vinny Letary, I think we've seen to the point that they are um, they're Iowa guys at this point. Like Lucini is an Iowa guy. Mason Shaw, I would imagine, will be back. I've seen some Shaw chatter here in the comments. I think he'll be back, but 
Um, I've I've seen enough. Yeah, PB's right. Those two are call ups when other players get hurt. That's that's about all they're capable of. Um, they're just they. I mean, like look at the look at the game logs here. Like, let me just let me just see what we got for Lucini. Lucini had back to back games with a point against Ottawa and Colorado. He also had a goal against Anaheim, but beyond that, he had an assist on February 19th, then did not have another point until March 19th. It, it's just not consistent enough. Like, is he the one that had all those goals waived? Oh, those cursed offsides. Oh, it's another thing that I am not going to miss about this season is just the amount of goals that have been called off for um, frame by frame offsides. I do not need to see any more of that. Yeah, this is an this is another good point. Um that Iowa just has they they sent a ton of players up to fill in for all of the injured guys on the Minnesota Wild roster, and they didn't really have anything else to fill those spots with. So it just it was just a lot of shuffled parts all season and we'll talk about it after the year is officially done but like the the fact that the fact that this the plan here was basically to just have everybody be healthy like there was really no contingency plan and we saw how quickly that completely derailed so it, everybody just needs the the off season at this point. Um, just get everybody healthy and let the the theme for next year, the theme for next year should be to let the young players put them in spots to impress. That that it would be the best thing that could happen for the Minnesota Wild next year. It's going to be a tough hill to try to get to the postseason next year. But what we have seen from young players is the ability to impress, the ability to step into spots and to exceed expectations. I don't think anybody expected to see what we've seen from Liam Ugren so far. The fact that he has a goal and an assist in his first two games. Murat, who's Nadinov has started to find the score sheet, had the uh, the great had the great tip in goal against Vegas. So now he's on the board. And you just instead of just falling back on these veteran players that are just limited in what they can bring to the table, let some young players step into those spots and learn on the fly impress you wouldn't it be fun to be impressed by several players just stepping up and kind of learning roles as they go and being able to make major impacts um Murat who's Nadinov's a great example like he should he should be if you want to still go with Erickson Eck as your um, your number one penalty killing center. Sure, that's fine. But who's Nadinov needs to be your number two then? Because that speed, that speed plays. That speed plays, especially on the penalty kill. Um, just you just need to like I I would be I would actually be pretty irritated if. We go into next year and it's well no Freddie Goudreau is gonna be your 
your second center on the penalty kill. I don't need to see that again. Like you should at this point, you should at this point be looking at weakness areas and trying to fill them with different players. Penalty kill, you're going to have to find a different way to go about that. Because it just has not worked at all here this season. Um, just just let the kids let the kids step into roles. Play the youth. Let the chips fall where they may. Just evaluate these guys. See where they're at. Give them if they're not ready, then send them down. Send them back down with stuff to work on. What's wrong with that? Shark Boy Ben setting up the first week of the offseason very well. We'll dive into all of these different categories as to what all happened this year um, that led to this team being where we're at right now. And there was a lot. There was a lot that went adverse. 5 10 and 4 start. Dean Evison gets fired. Goaltending not able to even be average. Penalty kill being 30th, which, as PB notes, still better than two teams. Oh, <laughs> uh, what is the. Uh, what is the penalty kill chart looking like these days? I haven't checked this thing in ages. Minnesota Wilds still uh, still 30th, 73.9%, um, 72.4% for the Ducks. So pretty solidly entrenched in th uh, 30th. Um, great question on Avchinikov. He actually is going to be playing for Toronto for the rest of the season. Um, I, I didn't know teams did that, but he is on loan for Toronto. So don't be surprised if the Maple Leafs say, Hey, remember that trade? Just kidding. We don't, uh, we don't, we don't want to give him to you. No, he, he's just playing with them for the rest of the year, and then he'll be coming here after. Again, I didn't know teams did that, but here we are. We uh, learn something new every day. I would love this. Let's go. Let's see where the Wilds... Let's see who the Wilds... Uh, oh... Okay, this is this is a potential conundrum. Um, as of right now, based off of the mock draft for the Tankathon, in which I have not simmed it, I just went with the Wild at 12. Minnesota Wilds are at at this current moment mocked to take Tij in, in, Iginla, uh, Jerome Iginla's kid. At this point, although, again, I am still on the train of drafting a defenseman. My pick would be Siliev, the six foot seven Giants, although Zeev, Zeev Byam would be fantastic too. Um, we'll, uh, we'll see how things play out. I would love Siliev. Would love Siliev in that spot. Realistically, it is probably going to be Gus and Flower again next year, right? Or do they throw Jesper into the deep end and hope that things work out? This is an interesting question because it seems like it's trending more towards Flurry coming back for another season. Um, and if that's the case, then you either go 
Flurry and Jasper or Flurry and Gus. I I keep going back and forth. I hear the argument that you got to be patient with young goaltenders, especially on the Gustafson side with him. Um, with this being his second year in the NA, like second full year of being a starter. Um, I, I don't know. It, it is going to depend entirely on what Flurry does. Cause the point that Jesse made the other day in saying that you would rather Jesper be mentored by Flurry than by Gus, that checks, but I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I am going to have to, I'm going to have to think on that a little bit, but may, and maybe, maybe Billy decides to go with, both and if one or the other gets hurt then you call Jesper up to fill that spot and hang out with the other um it it depends it depends on what you think it depends on if you think Philip Gustafson can get closer to what he did last year than this year if you think that he can fix a lot of the things that have gone wrong this year, then it probably makes sense to keep him. If you don't, then it probably makes sense to deal him to a goalie hungry franchise, the New Jersey Devils. Cough, cough. So, or as the captain notes, you could just have Flurry, you could just have him take over for Freddie Shabbat. His kids are in school here. Maybe he wants to stay on a little longer than um, simply being a player. Gus Beckman and our first to get a top three pick. Can't tell me Chicago or San Jose wouldn't be tempted. They would not. Uh, Shark Boy Ben. It would take more than that to move up into the top three. It would take two prospects, probably, and a pick. Um, because here, like, here's the thing with trying to trade up. Those teams, Chicago and San Jose, they have no incentive to take on those those players because they're in the long haul. And Macklin Celebrini or any of the other guys at the top of the draft board are good enough to wait on. I would be I would be fine with the Wild taking a swing to try to get up to the top if they're not going to be bad enough to get there themselves. But I think it's going to cost you a lot more than Gustafson, Adam Beckman, and a first-round pick. That's a lot, but... um. I think it would cost you more. Jesper is ready. Could keep Shabbat as goalie coach and hire Flurry as goalie development coach. I believe we use that wouldn't be a bad route. That wouldn't be a bad route to go. You see this with players all the time, former players that go into the front row, front office as they get put in these development roles. It wouldn't be a bad route to go. It just depends on depends on what Flurry wants to do. I personally don't think he is going to get into coaching. Um, when his, I, I think he's going to kind of ride off into the sunset when he's done. Maybe he comes back and he does a little TV. Um, I, I think he mostly is going to uh, to take the time to spend with his family once he's done playing, but it wouldn't surprise me if at some point he circles back and is involved, whether it be with the penguins or the wilds 
Um, time, time will tell. A uh, reminder that we've got the live show at noon tomorrow where we'll further dive into these last two games, take a look ahead to the final two games of the week against the Kings Monday and the Kraken on Thursday. Um, with the fact that it is 126, uh, I think I'm going to uh, call it for tonight's postcast. But again, we got the live show tomorrow at noon, later today at noon. So. Make sure to keep an eye out for that. Make sure to uh, bring your questions. We'll answer those um, on tomorrow's show. And uh, make sure to hit how early can they approach Kaprizov and try to negotiate his next contract? Are there rules about that? Or can they hypothetically start having those conversations now? I think it's... If I recall correctly, I think you can the off season before your final year of the contract, I think is how that works. Um, so the year before your fi the off season before your final year of the deal is when you can start to have those conversations. Um, so it's it's on the way and it would not surprise me if as soon as eligible those conversations begin because it's going to take a while to get everything um ironed out it's going to take a while to get everything ironed out so the moment if i'm if i'm not correct on that timetable the moment those talks can happen they will um Again, like I said, like I said a couple of weeks ago, Bill Guerin's future, Bill Guerin's job is entirely dependent on whether or not Kirill re-ups. If Kirill doesn't re-up here, Craig Leopold is going to hold that against him personally. So I would not take that lightly if I was the, uh, the president of hockey operations. So that, that is going to be a huge, huge piece of the puzzle going forward. Two games left after tonight. And um, as mentioned, make sure to join us for tomorrow's live show, today's live show at noon. But uh, thank you for joining tonight's postcast. Minnesota Wild win by a score of 6-2. to two. And um, make sure to like tonight's episode uh if you enjoyed the content and uh, make sure to subscribe as well so you don't miss out on any new episodes also make sure thank you ren for reminding me to plug the uh, lockdown wild discord server i'll post the link here in the comments if you'd like to join in on the uh, conversations that happen throughout the week on game days too make sure to uh, join our Discord server as well. You can find new episodes every Monday through Friday. Uh, you're not alone, Sean. I, uh, I also am not convinced that the, uh, the Sharks are any good. They didn't look at tonight. Thanks, everybody. We'll, uh, we'll have you covered for uh, tomorrow's live show. But until then, this has been yet another edition of the Locked on Wild postcast, all part of the Locked on podcast network.